Hello and welcome to the University of Alberta's opening up copyright instructional module on Section 29 of the Copyright Act, covering fair dealing. In the landmark 2004 CCH v. Law Society of Upper Canada case, the Supreme Court of Canada definitively stated, the fair dealing exception is perhaps more properly understood as an integral part of the Copyright Act than simply a defense. Going on to note that fair dealing is a user's right. So what does this integral part of the Act say? Section 29 of the Act states, Fair dealing for the purpose of research, private study, education, parody, or satire does not infringe copyright. In addition, Section 29.1 covers fair dealing for the purpose of criticism or review, and includes two conditions, identifying the source and the author, performer, maker, or broadcaster. Section 29.2 outlines fair dealing for news reporting with the same set of conditions as criticism and review, and... Uh, th that's it. Yeah. Summarizing Section 29, then, there are eight fair dealing purposes, sometimes called categories. Research, private study, education, parody, satire, the latter three were added in 2012 revisions of the Copyright Act, along with criticism, review, and news reporting. And these final three purposes come with a few limitations. Well, this has been the University of Alberta's opening up copyright... <laughs> Wait a minute, that's not it. That is the text of the section. But there is a whole lot more to fair dealing that can't be deciphered from the act alone. Just because someone is using a work for the purposes of research, private study, education, or one of the other categories, it doesn't mean that they can do whatever they want. How the user is dealing with the work has to be fair. So how can we determine whether a dealing is fair? In that same CCH decision, the court carefully detailed how fair dealing is assessed using a two-step test. For a dealing to be fair, first it must meet one of the fair dealing categories in the Act. The court then outlined a second step to the test, which involves the six factors for determining the fairness of a dealing. This underscores an important limitation in relying solely on the Copyright Act. Sections of the Act, such as the fair dealing section, can only be completely understood by looking at the Act along with how the applicable sections of the Act have been interpreted by the courts. In the case of fair dealing, there have been three major Supreme Court cases that help clarify how fair dealing works. Looking only at the Act also obscures a second important discussion around fair dealing. Canadian fair dealing exceptions are often compared with American fair use exceptions for copyright infringement. While there are some similarities, for example, criticism, news reporting, and research are listed both as fair dealing and fair use purposes, there are some notable differences. Unlike Canada's legislation, the U.S. legislation lists four factors used for assessing fair use. More importantly, though, the U.S. fair use provisions state purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, etc., and what is notable is not the similarities or differences in the purposes, but those two little words, such as. The U.S. list is illustrative. It allows for purposes that might be closely aligned with the stated purposes, but not exactly as stated. In contrast, the Canadian fair dealing purposes are exhaustive. Your use must fall within the specific categories listed to qualify. This is an important difference. The Supreme Court of Canada has suggested that meeting a fair dealing category is the easy part of a fair dealing test. For example, on the CCH case, it stated, research must be given a large and liberal interpretation. And in the SOCAN v. Bell case, it reiterated that the first step, assessing if one of the purposes is met, has a low threshold. There has been some debate about whether the Canadian fair dealing list could be improved by making the list illustrative rather than exhaustive. Debate over an illustrative versus exhaustive list was an important point of discussion in the statutory review of the Canadian Copyright Act. While there were both proponents and critics of moving to an illustrative list, the House of Commons Standing Committee on Industry Science and Technology ultimately recommended amending the Copyright Act to have an illustrative list. The committee felt that such an approach would allow for a broader range of purposes, such as pastiche, informational analysis, and video game streaming to be considered as fair dealing purposes. The committee also noted that, 
Of the six factors introduced by the Supreme Court and CCH, the purpose of the dealing is only one of the factors in determining whether a dealing is fair. You should now be able to identify the eight purposes for fair dealing, recognize the limitation of relying on only the Copyright Act for understanding fair dealing, and understand the difference between an illustrative list of fair dealing purposes and an exhaustive list. This has been the University of Alberta's opening up copyright instructional module on Section 29 of the Copyright Act covering fair dealing. Thank you for your attention.